Hello and welcome to the first Adventure Creator tutorial. I'm going to make a series of things here showing the different things that Adventure Creator uh, for Unity can do. So first things first, you should have bought Adventure Creator from the Asset Store. Then when you have bought it, you can find it in your package manager. Um, I'm going to just click reload download here because I have already downloaded it, but you should do that first and then we can import. Okay, so basically if you want to look at the demos, you can like get a kind of like idea of what kind of things you can do, but we don't need those. So we can just remove those from our uh, import settings. Use the default things, just the 2D demo, this is the 2D demo, and this is the 3D demo. We can uncheck those, we don't need them. Everything else needs to be there. Yes, let's click import. It's compiling the scripts, reloading script assemblies, and then it uh, shows some uh, things that it needs to do, so everything will work like so. Now it does uh, usually say some kind of problem things that it doesn't like. Uh, it detects some problems, but it's it's nothing to worry about. It's it's quite normal. Just leave it. Okay. Now you can see there's a new drop-down menu here for the adventure creator. We're going to getting started and click on the new game wizard. Here you can set up your game. So like this is the thing you have to do first. Let's give our game a name. This is just Adventure Create. I wish I could write Creator Tutorial Thingy. Yes, next. So we are going to go with 2D because that's what I worked on mostly. Uh, you can also do, do 3D, but we're not going to focus on that right now. You can still position your characters in 3D space if you want to. Okay, then the interface settings. How do you want to interact with hotspots? It, uh, at this point it doesn't really matter which you choose. Uh, it explains every one of these, like uh, they're a bit different, but you can always change these. So it's fine. And I'm going to use the de default AC GUI system. That's, uh, that's quite fine. Okay, so this uh, shows all the settings. There's also the input method and uh, the movement method. If you want point and click moving, that's fine. I'm using direct. Um, so that means you actually like control your character with the WASD. And these are the like basic settings that I, I have used in my projects mostly. Okay, click finish. It's going to import the needed things. And now the process is complete. It, uh, I would like to organize the scene, yes. It uh, adds us these very useful, like, uh, you could use these as a folders. Everything goes into their uh, according places so you can find them easily. Okay, and then we can close this and it added an AC game editor. This is like where all the magic happens. You, uh, what, like, for the first scene, like uh, every scene needs to have a default sound, default sorting map, a default camera, and the default Namesh. Uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of game you, you, you're making. Even if you don't need Namesh, like you don't use any follow player things, like NPCs are not going to follow the player. And if you're using direct movement, you don't really need the Namesh, but it needs to be there or the console will just throw errors at you. So you should have that. Basically, the scene settings, you can add all sorts of things here. We can go deeper into this later on. Basically, the scene menu is for every scene. It's its own scene. And what I have done, for example, the sorting map. This handles the orders in layer. You need to have a lot of these. But I'm going to import my own. This is like, this adds the ability to just make orders in layers for this sized map. It's quite large. You probably won't need this much, but the, uh, where it changes the position or order the, of the character is very small. So 
that's why it's it works like a, like a charm with these settings. Like if you had bigger sprites, you could do with uh, larger like areas for each order. But to me, this is fine. And don't worry about the like the, these kinds of uh, strange values. It it sometimes automatically does this, but the difference to the whole like number is so tiny, so we don't really need to worry about that. And what we need to do with the camera is set its C position to minus 10 or so, so it shows everything that we place into the map here. So we don't have a scriptable render pipeline here yet, so let's add that, because we want to have some cool stuff in our game, like those 2D lights and stuff like that. So because we started with uh, just basically an empty 2D uh, base Unity project, so we need to add the universal uh, render pipeline here, so we can have more uh, stuff in our game. Okay, now that the package is downloaded, we can create rendering, universal render pipeline, and 2D renderer. It says experimental, but don't worry about that. I'll just give it some name here. Okay, we have that. And we also need a pipeline asset. It automatically creates the pipeline asset renderer, but we don't need that. We just need to add the 2D renderer here. Good. Good, Anakin. Good. I'm not going to go into these settings uh, too much. Just when we had, have that, we move it here in the graphics menu and and the quality rendering. Okay, so now we can also add 2D lights. Global light needs to be present in everything. Just make sure it's in the zero. It doesn't matter, but I make sure everything is in the zero. Move it into the lights folder and it's good. What I'd also like to use in my base scene here is add an, just a an market 2D. Name it off-screen marker, for example. And then we move it way off into the distance. That's fine. So basically, usually when you want to like maybe pick up an item that's shown on the map, when you pick it up, you just teleport the actual sprite of the object here. You could also destroy them, but sometimes destroying things uh, brings some problems along. So I don't want to do that. Just move everything to the off-screen marker and that's fine. Especially if, if we are like moving characters into the scene and back to the scene. We don't have to always like destroy and create them. That probably would or could create some problems. So if they're always in the scene and just moving to a place where we can see them, that's fine. Also, what you would like to have in your base scene is just have all of your sounds here, like basically the things that you might need in every scene. So like basically everything that like level up sound maybe, or pick up sound, or stuff like that. So, the most basic sounds, you want to have their own game object with the sounds, so you can use them easily in your scenes. So we just name it the base scene, and this basically is already seen to get to building your maps, but because we don't have to do all of that for every scene we create, we just when we want to make a new scene, we just save this scene as named something else. For like example, C S C E underscore scene underscore one. For example, that's just uh, some kind of naming convention that you should probably use. Like that. Then we start building a scene here, and we already have everything we need here, like set up correctly. And then we want a new scene, just choose the base scene and save it as something else and then start building there. That's what I do, that's how I do it. It's There's way more styles to make your game with Adventure Creator, but this is just the, like Forever and Arkham Break and the games that I have made.
work like this. So this is it for this tutorial. I will go more in depth in following tutorials. So stay tuned.